What is up, everybody? This is Ryan here with The Scale Up Show. Really excited to talk to you about today, unlocking GPT's potential. I mean, we're going from concept to cash flow in weeks. And something really interesting that I'm going to hit you with today is something that I've never heard anybody else talk about. And it's, I think the monetization idea that people have with GPTs is totally wrong. It's not going to happen the way that most people are talking about right now. So I'm going to share that with you in today's show. How do you grow like a VC-backed company without taking on investors? Do you want to create a lifestyle business, a performance business, or an empire? How do you scale to an exit without losing your freedom? Those are the questions, and this show is the answer. All right, welcome everybody. This is sponsored by the Sales AI Accelerator. Uh, this is effectively what I'm doing is taking everything from my brain, integrating AI with it, all my sales experience, and then giving it to you uh, essentially through the Sales AI Accelerator, give you nine free resources as well as a free trial to leverage and use my own personal prompt library to take advantage of it and effectively save 10 to 20 hours a week while also upskilling yourself by maybe even two to three X. So really excited to share that with you. Check it out. The link will be in the show notes so you can check it out there. And now on to the show. All right. So today what we're going to go over is like, I'm really excited about this and and I'm excited because like I was thinking about this and I'm like, I have to share this with my people because like I, I haven't heard anybody talk about it. Everybody's humming about GPTs and I think there's amazing opportunity there. Like there's definitely amazing opportunity. However, I think it's going to look a lot different than what people are positioning it and expecting it to. And so I want to give you an insight on where I think this is going and what you could do with it. Because I've talked to a lot of individuals, even leaders, who want to create a new opportunity with AI. Effectively, folks that are not coding or not developers by nature, but have ideas that now they could actuate very, very simply just by using language. And so I don't want people to go down this rabbit hole of what might be. Um, now, granted, I'm not a thousand percent sure this is going to happen, but... Uh, let me walk you through this and explain my logic and, you know, make your decision from there. However, this is where I think is going to happen. And so I kind of equate it to basically like outbound, right? When when you look at cold outbound, one of the things that happened was it used to be an extremely manual process. And so what happened was people were a lot more intentional with the way they created outbound messaging and emails to people. And then what happened later is all these sequencers came along. So effectively, you could drop messages in and then it automated the whole process for you. Well, there's good and bad things that happen from that, right? Sometimes, um, you know, garbage in, garbage out. So I've seen people scale shit. So effectively, they have really crappy messaging and then they blast it out to tons of people and tons of people hate what they're talking about, right? So we don't want to do that. And so what I think the first phase of the GBTs is, is like, I think there's close to 74,000 out there already. Yes, within weeks, okay? And part of that is because they made it so simple to create. And I'm going to walk through the three areas of the, the three levels of creation in terms of value for GPT. So you truly understand that. And so when you're when you're thinking about creating a product, whether it be internally or externally um, for someone else as a business, right? Or even just for yourself, right? As like a, a general use app, you, you kind of have the understanding of where the potential, the value levers that you could pull and they have different levels of complexity as well with them, okay? So number one, and, and the way I look at this is an upside down pyramid, okay? With the least value being at the bottom. So if we look at it, that's more of the guided approach, okay? So that's if you're just having a conversation as you're building it or as you're configuring it, and then you're replying with what you want and giving it very broad instructions, okay? And so what happens is like, I've tested this in a few different situations. It does okay, but most of the time the output isn't absolutely amazing. Right. And so there are areas where I've seen very, very simple use cases that still turn out good. For example, convert anything. Um, that's a very simple use case or Simpsonize me. Right. Where you could turn in a picture of uh, basically the Simpsons or any kind of picture and make it like a Simpsons style picture. Uh, so that GPT is, is super interesting as well. But um, effectively think of it as super simple, put together, you can put it together in minutes. However, I don't think those are going to be the apps that, that went out or the GPTs that went out over time. And if you got to think about it, the way that this is different is actually I'll get into that a little bit later. I want to go down that path now. OK, 
Okay. So number two, so number one is guided. So that's basically having a conversation. It helps you create it. And so these aren't necessarily going to be bad, but like I said, the quality isn't going to be as good as the next phase, next level up the pyramid. And that's where you give it more specific prompting. And at the same time, you give it context with files or data that you put in there. Now, I'm going to talk about why you have to be very, very careful about doing that if you have a public GPT. Okay, so I'm going to get into that. So what you're going to have is you're going to have effectively some kind of training data, and then you're going to have uh, a deeper understanding or prompts integrated in there or prompt ideas integrated in there. And then you're going to create that output. Now, once again, this has been tested and there's some examples where it's okay or the, the output's good, but this is a higher level of complexity, which is a higher level of value, okay? So there's a tool called SEO Mentor, which is which is pretty neat in terms of looking at and identifying, you know, how SEO optimized your content or pages are, right? And so that develops like, or that requires a special level of expertise, uh, it leverages the Google principles for SEO. So that's very interesting as well. All right. And then the third one is integrations. Okay. So how to integrate with other APIs or systems or plugins. So there is a pretty cool, uh, effectively GPT called Grimoire, G-R-I-M-I-O, I'm sorry, G-R-I-M-O-I-R-E. And what I would say is it's solid. It'll help you create literally a website. And it turns out pretty good. Um, there's a few other ones that that I've noticed as well. And I'm actually going to pull these up while we're talking. All right. So here's some of the other ones. OK, so I'm doing this in real time because I want to I want to give you this and some of this as I thought, like uh, Logo Maker. That's very cool. I tried that. Very simple to create. Uh, and so what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Grimoire. G-R-I-M-O-I-R-E. That's a good one. There's another one that is. I told you about Simpsonize Me Designer GPT. So uh, basically that I found versus Grimoire to be a little more intuitive and easy. Both of those are kind of recognized as website creators. Um, but Grimoire will actually create the code and give you the tools to do it and walk you through it very simply. So there's a lot of back and forth, but you could do it effectively. Uh, Designer GPT, same thing, very simple website created like that. Okay. So the, those are like the higher value ones that have different integrations and different tools and automatically connects to it. And so I think when you look at who's going to win in terms of the general overall GPT store, it's going to be those ones that are more involved and integrated because of the fact that they're creating better output. You know, for a few weeks into this, we, we got effectively 74,000 GPTs already created because everybody's trying to take advantage of this gold rush. Um. I think that that's an area where, you know, pick, pick your poison with it, you know, um, really, really decide if that's something you want to spend time on and, and put it together. And my recommendation would be try something simply for yourself, make it private, see what you think, see what the experience you have and do it for a simple task that you do repeatedly week in and week out, right? Or day in and day out. And that'll give you a really good understanding of kind of where it's at in terms of the flow. Now, one of the things that I want to talk to you about that you have to be really careful and the big danger. So I highlight this in the beginning of the episode, but I, I kind of equate we're in the stage right now. Remember when, when Tesla effectively first started self-driving cars, right? They first started it. And then what happened was they, they did the test that it, it didn't go so well. Um, there was a few people that died and it wasn't, it was self-driving ish, right? It wasn't totally self-driving. When it comes to software with the G these GPTs, I kind of look at this the same way because effectively there are ways specifically where you could ask it and prompt it a certain way if you're using a GPT and it'll expose the training data. It'll, give, it'll basically give you what kind of data it has. And at the same time, it'll also identify like how it was created or the instructions, okay? So that's why I'm saying you gotta be very, very careful if you're creating this and you have your own proprietary information in there and you're sharing it at scale because you run the risk of something like that. Now, there are protectors that you could put in for that. However, this is so new, I would not advise doing this from a company perspective and sharing this out to anybody outside of your organization to begin, unless you deeply have a very deep understanding of the prompt injections that can happen uh, or other areas where they can extract information. Okay, so that is the biggest thing that I would say. So remember, just like Tesla, you don't wanna take a nap, You know. Day one of Tesla self-driving came out. It was awesome. People were pumped. But you don't want to take a nap 
the first day you're trying it. And that's kind of the stage we're in at now, right? So that's a good way to kind of look at it. Now let's talk about future paths to monetization. So I have not heard a single other person talking about this and maybe I'm living in my own bubble, in my own world, but most people I think associate the GPT store with the app store because Apple makes, I don't know, I think it's like a trillion dollars in revenue a year from our, maybe not that much, right? It's like 40 billion or $80 billion in revenue, which is still very good though, okay, right? None of us would, would turn that down. But I did a little detective work and this is what I think is gonna happen, okay? So if you look at OpenAI's board, right? One of the things, the people on the board that's still on there is the Quora CEO. That's Adam D'Angelo. Okay. So Quora is the creator of Poe. So Poe is an aggregation aggregator, shall we say. It's got the different large language models with ChatGPT and Claude and, and Minstrel and all these other ones in there. However, it gives creators the ability to create bots in there. Okay. So there's all these different bots which is where I think G or ChatGPT got the idea for the GPT store from, right? Adam's a board member. This is the model that Poe is leveraging. Poe is using this with different GPTs or bots. They make it super simple to do. And that's exactly what they did, okay? So, so Poe, or I should say Quora, the CEO, has a company named Poe, po, or I should say a solution named Poe, which is like an AI aggregator with different language models. And then it gives you the ability to create those bots, right? So that's... That's uh, insight number one. Insight number two is Sam Altman said, yeah, we're gonna do something like revenue share or give people the opportunity to earn money. He was very vague on purpose. And I, I think that was by design because of two reasons. One, they didn't have it totally baked yet. And two, they wanted to see how it took off. And three, I think if you look at the language he used, that resembles what Poe does for monetization. And so what Poe started doing, and I looked into this and said, like, how do, you, how do these people make money? What is it? And so effectively what it is, is if you get someone to use your bot and pay $20 a month to use Poe, right? There's a free version and there's a paid version, then the creator gets paid, okay? So effectively, if you look at it, it's an affiliate model. Every new user they bring on for $20 a month, they get a cut of it. And I, did, I couldn't find the exact percentage of it. I think OpenAI is essentially going to do the same thing with the GPT store. So I think they're going to look at it as like, hey, how could you bring users onto our platform and then have them continuously use it? And then I think they're going to give people just like an affiliate commission as a piece of that, of every new user they bring on. Now, granted, it, they might do something different to start. They might have bounties or they might have something for the leaders to really get the juices flowing and have all the PR flying behind it, just like they did at Dev Day. However, I wouldn't be surprised if it was more like an affiliate model. Um, and the reason being, if you look at the way that the App Store is created, what they do is Apple essentially has to approve the app before they enable you to put it on the App Store. Okay. And then they get their 20, 30%, might be 30% of every app. Okay. So that's what Apple does. Remember, OpenAI is not doing that. What they are doing is they are dropping the barrier to create these. Uh, to a very, very small level. Um, so anybody could do it. So effectively what they're gonna do is they, they can't pay everybody within there, right? So I think what they're doing is they're gonna see just like the, the Google model where it's more open source with that, who can create the best, what gets used the most, and then what gets used the most that brings the most users on is how they're gonna monetize and pay people. So that's my guess. Obviously, if I don't have a crystal ball, um, I don't have the sports almanac like Marty McFly had in Back to the Future. But really what I'm considering is like if I put everything together, I do all the math and I look at the business logic of where they're going and what they're doing. I think that's how they're going to monetize it. So um, and help you and help people monetize it. Right. And I'm not going to even get into what I see as the next phase. But that's what I wanted to start off with. And I wanted to give you a really good understanding of just the whole lay of the land, because there's tons of people flocking towards this. There's some cool things in there that are very simple in nature. Um, I went to build one out specifically with internet enablement um, or internet enabled uh, area for a specific use case. I'm not gonna talk about which it is. And the results I got were okay. It took really long to load and there was a lot of other kind of bugs that you need to work through. So uh, I, last but not least, the one that I didn't mention that I wanna get before we leave is these things take a couple minutes to create but they take like a month to really fine tune it and make sure it's good. 
So, um, so I hope this was helpful for you today. I wanted to share this with you. I know it wasn't specifically related to revenue and growing a company, but it's specifically related to revenue and I should say your revenue and you growing your income there. So I wanted to share this with you. I hope this was helpful. Let me know. Give me feedback, right? Like feel free to drop me a note uh, on my website, ryanstaley.io. Drop a note in there. Um, send me a, a DM on LinkedIn. Let me know if there's a certain topic you like. Let me know that you're a listener and you heard it, but really enjoy you checking out the show. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for checking out the Scale Up Show. My mission in life is to help founders and revenue leaders avoid all the pain and suffering in revenue growth so they can flip it and create a life of their own design. So if you enjoyed this show, please like, review, share it on social, and more importantly, just share it with a friend. Share it with someone that you think could learn and benefit from what you heard on today. But the more we get the message out, the more people we could help, the bigger the impact we make, and the bigger the community gets, which helps everybody. So once again, thank you for being a loyal listener. I appreciate you and look forward to seeing you on the next episode.